Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. Happy Sunday. Thank you for joining us this morning. We have a wonderful service in store for you this morning. But first, our opening affirmation from Wings of Prayer, and it's from Daily Word, January the 30th, 1951. And it is, aware of my unity with God, I take the initiative in directing my life. Again, aware of my unity with God, I take the initiative in directing my life. And what I love about that affirmation is we are in control of our life. We truly are the skipper of our own soul vessel. So this morning, as we think about being in control of our life, and controlling our life from divine principle, knowing there is only one presence and one power, God the good, the omnipotent. So I invite you just to breathe that truth, that authority within you in, that your divinity within you, that gives you truly the ability to do and be who you have come to be. So just take a deep breath and just breathe in that understanding. Let's dedicate this morning to understanding more deeply the awareness of who we are. You're the Christ. I am the Christ. But let's claim it at a deep soul level. Let that truth saturate our mind, our body, our soul, all the way, uh, all the way out to our aura. So we truly can live in a field of attraction of absolute good. And we know as good Unity True students that, again, there's only one presence and one power. And we affirm that truth every day, knowing it is true despite appearances. And if you believe that truth with me, I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now here is Kristen with the Daily Word. Sunday, January 10th, 2021. The daily word is prosperity. I claim prosperity now. When I feel tempted to wish for a more prosperous life, I remember my prosperity begins at the level of my thinking. I focus my thoughts on many blessings, on the many blessings already in my life, and I feel grateful. From this place of gratitude, it becomes easy to notice more and more blessings all around me. This awareness helps me to develop an attitude of true prosperity. I tend to my thoughts of prosperity as though they are flowers in a garden. I plant them in the good soil and nurture them with water and sunshine. This rich environment allows prosperous ideas to take root and grow. As, nature, as I nurture these ideas, I am abundantly blessed in life with love, health, and joy. And from Psalms 36, 8, they feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. And again, the affirmation is, I claim prosperity now. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. A perfect affirmation, too, for the talk we are going to be receiving this morning. But first, I'd like to sync up with Silent Unity. I would encourage you to think about contacting Silent Unity if you have not made a call or if you haven't emailed them, or you can also text them. They have an app. But I'd encourage you as good Unity True students to use the resources that we have to pray and have that energy field within you in your prayer life. And that's at Silent Unity. Since 1890, a divine idea, Myrtle Fillmore and her husband Charles Fillmore, not only they birthed this idea, but they've kept it alive. And we still have that alive today back at Unity Village. So as we sync up with the Saint Unity Chapel right now, I'd like to hold in prayer that soul that is sitting in that chair in the Unity Chapel, holding the high watch for all the prayers that Silent Unity has received. Let's just breathe in that truth and know that that oneness is with us. And as we connect up by the power and law of omnipresence, we are supporting Saint Unity back at the Saint Unity uh, Chapel again at, in Unity, at Unity Village in Missouri, but also here. We are connected in that oneness. So I invite you during this service to feel that oneness, feel that support, and know that we are truly surrounded by the wings of truth. Uh, this is our second Sunday of the month, and on the second Sunday of the month, we recite both our mission and vision statement. So I invite you to speak with me, if you would. 
The mission of Unity Way Church is to empower ourselves and others to grow spiritually by teaching and living unity principles of practical Christianity. In our vision statement, Unity Way Church is a center where people of all ages come together for healing, prayer, meditation, spiritual growth, education, service, and fellowship. And I want to say, as good Unity True students, I'm very proud of both this, these vision and mission statements, and I know the film wars, Charles and Myrtle, our co-founders of Unity School of Christianity, would be very proud of these statements, too. The key is, though, not only that we have these statements, in these visions that we hold, but we live them. We live them to the best of, of our ability every single day. And that's exactly what we want to do here at Unity Way Church. And now I would like to share with you our comic for this morning. And you're going to love this one. You're going to love this. It says, they say money talks. Mine just waves bye-bye. I love it. We're going to be talking about prosperity, and we know prosperity doesn't wave bye-bye unless we're in a negative consciousness. Uh, it is my pleasure to invite to the lectern this morning in our platform, Reverend Ken Fendrick. He's going to be delivering the Sunday lesson this morning, and I just know you are going to enjoy his wisdom as he shares his unity truth with us this morning on prosperity. And so with no further ado, I want to again say thank you, Ken, for uh, coming here. Thank you for being here at our church during this intern time. And we're just so proud of you, and we look forward to your message of truth. And now here's Reverend Ken. Thank you, Reverend Michael, and brothers and sisters at Unity Way Church. For those of you I'm meeting for the first time, uh, just a little bit about myself. I am a fourth year student at Unity Urban Ministerial School and also a ministerial candidate for Unity Worldwide Ministries. And I'm set to graduate uh, this summer and ordain this summer of 2021. Uh, I'm married to my lovely wife, Allison. We've been married for 11 years. We live in Santee, California with our dog, Kenai. And I love when I'm not working in church or um, working. I like, I really like doing uh, hikes and getting out in nature with the dog and my wife. So a little bit about me. Um, Today's topic is prospering penny power. And I'd like to start off with a little question. How many of you have heard the saying, find a penny, pick it up, and the rest of the day you'll have good luck? And how many of you, when you found that penny, actually would pick it up and keep it? Well, again, today's talk is prospering penny power. And you know, this penny has been much maligned in recent times. Many are calling a halt for its production. And you, did you know today that it costs around one and one half cents to produce the penny? That's right. This makes the penny actually more valuable than its given value. The penny is the lowest common denomination in US currency. And much like our relationship to God, it's an essential and equal part of a whole. So what can we learn from this humble yet resilient coin? Well, the first lesson is actually, it's printed right at the top of the coin. In God we trust. We put our complete faith in God as our source, not the currency, which is just the physical manifestation. Many years ago, there's a story of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. When they were starting their fledgling society of silent unity, they were having some financial difficulties. And they were at risk of not making the payroll one year. One of the staffers came running up to Myrtle and said, Myrtle, let's pray that our money holds out. But Myrtle emphatically replied, oh no, let's pray that our faith holds out. Time and time again, the filmers demonstrated just how close their connection to divine source was. They truly believed, God is my help in every need, and God does my every hunger feed. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 20, the master teacher Jesus, he teaches us, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, 
and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. This penny right here represents that mustard seed. For with enough of these, coupled with our faith, faith and divine substance, we can buy that mountain. We can hire an army of movers to relocate it. An example of this is evidenced in a, in a large construction project going on by my house. It's a huge housing development. And what happened was, is at some time, there was an idea. These pennies actually, in the realm of source, in the realm of divine substance, represent ideas. And in unity thought, ideas are the invisible source of our divine currency. So there was a person there that had an idea, a few ideas, and they multiplied into more ideas. And these ideas began to express in drawings and in, and in engineering diagrams. And these engineering diagrams became a physical manifestation. Money and resources started coming. And behold, a physical manifestation of housing that housed many people were developing. Mountains were moved to create this. This penny, this divine idea as a start, helped create that. The pennies came and helped create that housing development. So they also had enough pennies to employ many workers and all the machinery to move that mountain to build that new community. One of my favorite stories of Charles Fillmore early, he's the co-founder of Unity, takes place when it had become evident that the fledgling organization had outgrown its current building. It was Fillmore's vision that to build, one, to build one would accommodate their increasing activities. And although Charles had enacted various committees to oversee many of the aspects of this growing unity ministry, the building committee was thought of as somewhat of a joke. People didn't really take him seriously. So during 1902, at the Society of Silent Unity meeting, one of the board members jokingly started the building fund when he starkly cried, I'll give you a penny for that. But, but the one cent piece was not a joke to Charles Fillmore. This one cent piece was not a joke. He took it. He said, I'll take it. He took it. He gave thanks for it and blessed it right in front of the group. To him, the resources for the building were already there. They were already in place and they were already manifesting. So this is the second lesson of the prospering penny. We give thanks for and bless what we have, no matter how small. And to go back to today's daily word that, that we heard today, I just want to reread a part of that because I think it's really important to this idea of thanks, blessing, and gratitude. And it states, I remember my prosperity begins with the level of my thinking. I focus my thoughts on the many blessings already in my life, and I feel grateful. From this place of gratitude, it becomes easy to notice more and more blessings all around me. This awareness helps me develop an attitude of prosperity. And again, it's that sense of gratitude, blessing, and awareness coupled with faith. Charles Fillmore's mind aligned with divine mind in this. Helped express this. In fact, that fund, that building fund that that penny started, it grew. It grew exponentially to $607. Now, that doesn't sound like a whole lot of money in this day and age, but $607 was a lot of money back then. It wasn't everything. And in that, in that flow of prosperity, in that flow of giving, there was another member of that, of that panel, of that group, that decided, you know what? I'm going to put this to the test, and I'm going to sell my house. I'm going to sell all my belongings and put that in the building fund. That money helped push them over the edge and helped help the Fillmores and the unity movement buy the new building, which we know is Tracy Street to this day. In the Gospels, Jesus took several loaves of bread and a few fish and fed thousands. How did he do this? He never had a consciousness of lack, nor listened to the doubters. Rather, he took the collection, he gave thanksgiving for it, and he blessed it.
And in that instant, the blessing compounded and multiplied the offering. What a powerful demonstration of abundance that was. You know, when I was a boy, my dad asked me if I would like to have a million dollars in, in a month's time, starting with just one penny. Sure, I replied, but how? So he showed me how each day you multiply the amount by two a day, one the first day, two the next day, three the next day, and so on, and so on, and so on. And by 30 days, there would be over a million dollars you would have. The same principle of compounding is working here as the loaves and the fishes, except for one critical piece. In the story of the loaves and the fishes, Jesus didn't just keep the increase for himself. Oh no, no he didn't. He used it and he shared it with his followers as well as the many gathered. This is the third lesson of our prospering penny. This is also illustrates the fifth principle of our unity core values. That principle is, it's not enough to practice the divine truths we know and the divine principles. Rather, we have to take action on them. And in this case, we don't hold on to the money and hoard it because that's like a stagnant pond, basically a pond where no water circulates. We're called to take in whatever increase we have and give out of that increase. So there's a constant flow going in and out of that pool. That's the beauty of this law. Again, we use it and we share whatever we have. If our pennies multiplied to a million in 30 days, we would increase exponentially our blessing by giving lovingly and faithfully and most importantly, dramatically out of this increase. And dare I say, even before the increase, simply giving it out of faith, knowing that we will be resupplied. In the book of Malachi, Chapter 3, verse 10, God issues us a challenge. We're instructed to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so there, there may be food in my house and see if I will not throw the floodgates wide open and pour out so much blessing that there will be room enough, not be room enough to store it. That's a powerful, bold, and dramatic statement, is it not? Something we could dare to try? Something we can issue right now is a challenge to ourselves to give out of that knowledge and the picture that it provides. The storehouse opening up, the floodgates pouring out so much blessing is like a jar of pennies. I don't know about you, but in my house, I have a jar and I take all my loose change and put it in the jar. And after so many years or a year, whatever, that jar increases to where it's full. And I take it, roll it up, and I take it to the bank, and I have money to buy something for somebody else, for myself, but it's, it's like a savings account. And I can picture in this verse this humongo jar that has no beginning and no end, just pouring out, raining down coins ceaselessly and unendingly. So I invite you to hold that vision in your head as you, as you give and as you receive. So the next time you find a penny, pick it up. Hold it in your hand. Feel the consciousness of faith, the power of gratitude, and the prospering power in the activity of divine laws this penny represents. God bless you all. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend Ken. And knowing that we believe in the law of prosperity, I invite you uh, to take whatever your gift may be. This is the time in our service where we have the ability to uh, bless our love offerings together as a spiritual community. And I'd like to invoke, the, again, like he, uh, Reverend Ken was saying about prosperity, about the law of circulation.
We're a tithing church. We've always been a tithing church here at Unity Way. We also tithe back to where we're spiritually fed, back at Unity Village, Silent Unity, Unity Worldwide Ministries, the Unity Institute, uh, Unity Urban Ministerial School, Daily Word, Unity Magazine, all the different avenues in which truth is delivered to us today. Also, we know that when we tithe back to these Unity uh, places that really are feeding us, that they tithe 10% out. So we're always in that law of circulation. And we also know that once we tithe and tap into this invisible substance, it is already blessing us in many, many ways. And we are just open and receptive. So if you please join me with our offering. And I'd like to say again to remind us that this is the exact offering that Charles and Myrtle Fillmore uh, used to use whenever they did their blessings when they were with us uh, in physical form. If you join with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. And let's imbue it with love and let's imbue it with our identity that we truly are here to be prosperous. And we know this to be so because it is our nature. And we'll use the mantra we use here at our church, which is thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now this is the time in our service where we get to collectively speak our prayer of protection. And this prayer has been around for a long time in unity and it's truly a powerful prayer. This morning I'd like to dedicate it to all uh, the individuals of this world, all the souls that are in this world right here and right now. I'd also like to dedicate it to this planet in which we live and move and have our being. And knowing that we are all blessed, we are all one in spirit and one in truth. So again, as we recite this poem, let us first see the truth within us and also share it with the people around us and know that unity is what we stand for. If you join with me, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. All is well. Let this Sunday, as we go forth into this week, let us take that divine idea of being well, wellness, and truly ground our prayer practice this week. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And I'll see you next Sunday. And again, thank you very much, Reverend Ken. Happy Sunday, and God bless.